Greetings, Fright Nights! It's your old pal, Count Dracula, from the planet Dracula, where bad movies stalk the night. Well, there ain't no getting around this bit. Zombies and Nazis are a thing. Why shouldn't they be? Nazis are like monsters right out of history. They hate, they're racist, and like zombies, they walk funny in groups. Keep lurching for the fear there, guys. From cult classics like Shockwaves to more recent incarnations like the Dead Snow series, nothing seems capable of stopping this perfectly ludicrous goose-stepping pairing. And you can see why it is so popular. It's so easy. Have some World War II backstory, give some weak-ass reason for dead Nazis to walk around again, like, you know, mad science or cursed Nazi gold, and bam, zombie Nazi movie. Then, because they're Nazis, you could just line them up like ducks at a range and mow them down! No guilt, no moral quandary. And as for moral policing, who the hell is gonna censor you based on how you treat a Nazi? It's so simple! I mean, there's no way you could screw that up, right? Zombie Lake. Holy shit. A French-Spanish co-production that was originally intended to be directed by the filthy father of sexy vampire films himself, Jesus Franco. But he left the project after having an argument with the intended distributor, Eurocene. With less than a week before principal photography was scheduled, Eurocene was forced to deal with a question no film project ever wants to have to answer. What do you do when Jesus himself tells you to fuck off? Well, you get the next best thing, of course. Enter French director Jean Rolin. You could think of him as Jesus Franco's French cover band. Some of Jean Rolin's other films include Requiem for a Vampire, The Shiver of the Vampire, and The R Rape of the Vampire? One. It's cause you won't give me a video camera for me to record my late night sexploitations. Yo, hey Uncle Varney. I take it those fake roofies I gave you last episode did the trick? Nephew, I am awash in fake unconscious no memory having pussy. Great, I'm happy for you. Well, Fright Nights, let's not waste any more time. Let's take the plunge and get ready to get wet as we dive into Zombie Lake. Okay, let's start this thing. Now we're off to an okay start. Hot French girl walking around a lake. I'm assuming this is the eponymous zombie lake, and uh, looks like she's relaxing by the dread gazebo. Uh, uh, that's an old D&D &D joke. And... Oh! oh, oh. Shit! Strap in, kids, because it's the 80s, and we're objectifying the shit out of this girl. As well as giving her a gynecological exam. No, seriously, if you watch this thing on Blu-ray, you can basically watch her ovulate. <laughs> Hello? Ooh, it's my offense attorney again. He tells me whenever something I do is offensive. Yeah? Uh -huh. Really? Too far, huh? Well, what about this? Two Fifty Shades of Grey, huh? Hmm, alright. How about this one? Hello? Hello? Huh. Oh man, three minute nude scene right in the beginning. And maybe this flick isn't gonna be so bad after.
that that's our zombie. That's our, that's our zombie. Oh my god, look at this thing! I mean, really. Really drink it in. It's so awful looking. You could find better zombie makeup at your local zombie lurch. And yet, for some reason, seeing that, I feel only joy. Man, I thought things were great with gratuitous nudity. But this, ladies and gentlemen, this is heaven. We then cut to this quaint little tavern quaintness to watch French people do what French people do best. Answer questions nobody asked. Bring me the bottle. I won't break no glass. The girl's not back yet, is she? Don't worry, she probably met some young stud. Seriously, who's this guy even talking to? He's not responding to anyone. Oh, maybe he's talking to French Wilford Brimley over here. I'd like to talk to you about French diabetes. Anyway, since they suddenly care about that girl from earlier, they decide that if she doesn't show up by tomorrow, they'll tell the mayor. Who's apparently got my Uncle Varney on his desk. Ah oh, yes, back in my old globe-trotting youth. <laughs> but as you can see, I was a much different man back then. Well, I gotta say, the zombie may be shit, but the cinematography isn't half ba Oh, come on! Uh, okay, okay, you know what? If we complained about everything, we wouldn't have nice things, so let's just move on. Good morning, Mayor. Just come by to check on that French diabetes. Did she turn up yet? Yet? How much time passed during that transition? Space is warped and time is bendable. Hey, that's my joke! <laughs> Fair use. Damn it! Oh shit, we must have hit another time warp. Apparently the movie killed another French girl while we were out. Oh, and I refuse to believe that I am the only one who wants that shirt to flap open. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Count Dracula, there's already enough naked tits in this movie. Brother, you can never have too much. Never. Ever. I think I've made my point. Listen, Gazik, I know how you feel about your poor daughter. Yeah, I know. Cut! All right, now that was great. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was great. Nothing wrong with it, but uh, yeah, just a little note. Remember, this is your little girl. Uh, she's dead, and you have no idea why. And uh, this is a really intense emotional moment, so I really need you to like, you know, you know, dig down and do some actor stuff. Do some actor stuff. Actor thing. Act. You know, like acting. That's why they call it acting. You know. Okay, great. That's fantastic. Uh, let me. Uh, I'll slay us in. Action. Yeah, I know. Cut. All right, awesome. We'll play it off as if you're being stoic. Perfect. It's a perfect idea. All right. Uh, hey, I got an idea. Let's let's uh, let's set up for the reaction shot outside where he's looking at his dead daughter. Camera two's already set up, sir. Oh, it is. Fantastic. Let's keep going. All right. You need some motivation? Try this. Maybe you're worried that this is divine retribution for uh, not taking that other girl's death seriously. And if maybe you had, uh, your little girl wouldn't be dead now. You, can you work with that? Great. Fantastic. Do that acting thing. All right. I'll slay us in. Action. Cut! Perfect! Eat your heart out, Jesus Franco! One of the big problems of this movie, besides the shitty zombie makeup, is that it has a chronic condition of cutting to scenes without giving you any clue as to how much time has passed. I mean, the guy leaves the mayor's office, cries, I think? Then we cut to this tree like it's a few moments later, but we pan down and the mayor is just hanging out like he's been there for hours. How much time is between these shots? But if you want to talk about inappropriate cutting, ho ho ho, check this out. Now be nice and tell me once again what you saw last night. I want all the details you can remember. <laughs> I cannot be the only one that thinks that that implies that the mayor did something awful to those two kids. Killed and molested those boys in that order. Now what else is there for me to do today? Anyway, a reporter shows up in town and stops by the tavern. Eh, eh, this scarf is heavy. I just ordered something. I don't have it yet. I can't wait any longer. 
Why did I order this? This place sucks. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Then don't. Not finding anyone else who wants to talk, French Wilford Brimley steps in and tells her to talk to the mayor. But when she gets there, the mayor is not happy one bit. In fact, he's not just pissed, he's changed the film stock pissed. Actually, this isn't a mistake. You see, a lot of old horror movies have had footage rediscovered that was thought lost. And when they put it back in, when they do the new DVD or the Blu-ray, this is about as close as the new footage can be made to match the master. What I'm wondering is why this name, it got it recently, two or three centuries ago. Two or three centuries is not recently! <laughs> no, you're wrong, miss. It so happens its real name is the goddamn lake. I, I'm sorry, what? The goddamn lake. You goddamn lake! Oh man, we're pushing in and looking up. Means it's flashback time. So it turns out the story of the lake has to do with World War II, a time, as you all know, when soldiers died from random explosions and shot into the air at things we don't see. So the whole thing was like a really bad Call of Duty glitch. It's also a time when women run into the open for no reason and start screaming. Ach, du lieber, is helpless French woman. I shall do my duty and rape her against the Berlin Wall for Deutschland. Unfortunately, he falls prey to what many Nazi rapists do. Premature ejaculation. All too common. Ugh, just going to sleep now. You could finish yourself off with the French tickler, yeah? Well, looks like he died doing what he loved, boys. Now cart him off. We don't have all day. Yeah, yeah okay. Okay. whatever. It's all bullshit anyway. Oh my god, that guy just tried to rape me, save me, and then die in front of me. I, I have no reaction to that. Wait, he's still alive? I thought he was dead! Oh, oh, what the fuck ever. It's wartime. No time to fucking think about this shit. I'm not sure if he tried to rape me or save me, but I'm so in love with that man. I... I think. Boys and girls, I cannot tell you how little of a shit I give about this romantic subplot. But unfortunately, it's integral to the movie. Well, at least there's more nudity. Even the pendant looks like an areola. Well, I didn't get off and you have no technique, but here, take this titty pendant as a symbol of the one thing you're going to remember. Ugh, oh, thank you. Now I must return to fighting for the Third Reich with the cool step against the extermination of Jews and the ovens will constantly remind me of the heat of our passion. Oh man, German eugenics really have gone too far. They managed to crossbreed Nazis with Klansmen. Black Jews better watch the fuck out! And if that wasn't enough, they've also crossbred Nazis with tanks! Holy shit! Terminator was right! Oh, you said a Kana. Turns out, sometime between those cuts, the Nazis and the French farm girl had a baby. We'll call her Helena. And thus, Helena Bonham Carter was born. And I think someone needs to wake up the sound guy. Now, you can't really tell because I'm showing you the uh, English dub as opposed to the one with the subtitles. But if you watch the subtitle version, you realize this entire scene is 80 yard. So that means that this silent bit is done that way on purpose. Why? Oh, well, it doesn't matter, as the Nazis get ambushed by the French resistance. Diabetes, motherfucker! Your daddy's fucking dead, kid. Dead as shit. Mommy's not looking so hot either. Wait, what? She's fucking dead? Yeah! She's just fucking dead! Of what? Oh my, oh my god. What even? What even times ten? So having killed the Nazis, the mayor tells the resistance that there's another German platoon coming, so they need to get rid of the bodies quick so they dump them in the lake. Either that or they're rehearsing for the remake of the 80s classic, Regular Nazis Must Drown. Anyway, back in the present, the mayor finishes the story and we find out little Helena takes after her mother as she too waits for the day Nazis come and have sex with her in haystacks. Jesus, girl, you are too young for that kind of thing. I mean, you gotta be at least 12 before you start sucking and fucking. Just like your mother. Yeah, she sure is. I can't tell what emotion she's supposed to be having either. 
Can you tell old Jean Rolin is not known as an actor's director? Because, uh, yeah, I noticed it. Whoa, no time for that now. The girls' basket team has just arrived. Uh, come on, girls. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wait, when is all this happening? When? When? When is all this happening? I mean, if the, the girl's is the guy's daughter, and this is this is happening in World War II, then this would this would have to be the fifties. But 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 that's impossible because these girls right here are wearing like '80s short shorts, and then there certainly weren't any girls' basket team back in the day because of prohibition. Get God, Dave, great David Koresh, what's happening? Space is warped and time is bendable. Is my mind going? Because according to this music, someone's gonna get fucked by a clown. It's it's the itty bitty titty committee, but but little do they know that the zombies are attracted to the sounds of dad ass. I'm I'm never gonna forgive you, Richard Kelly. You fucking betrayed us! Donnie Darko was brilliant! South of Tales is a piece of shit! Meanwhile, back in the movie, the one girl that survived the previous zombie attack. Oh yeah, by the way, the girl's basket team was attacked by zombies, so you didn't get that. Anyway, she runs into the quaint tavern naked and faints. Hey, don't rape her all at once, guys. We won't. No. No. Uh-uh. Okay. No bullshit anyway. Look, bitches be dying all over the place. Could somebody send help? You know what he says, huh? A bunch of ghosts about to attack his village. Ghosts? I thought they were zombies. God damn it, do you not know the difference? Okay, kids, now I know that because of a lot of new movies out there, there is some confusion as to what actually constitutes a zombie. So we're gonna set you straight, all right? Okay, a zombie is the reanimated corpse of a dead person. It can move fast, it can move slow, it doesn't matter. What's important is that it was once alive, it is a physical being and is now compelled to eat the flesh of the living. That's what a zombie is, okay? As opposed to a ghost, which is a spirit entity. It does all kinds of spooky things. It makes weird noises. Sometimes it's invisible. A zombie is not a ghost. A zombie does not float about. It does not walk through walls. And it does not possess people. Unless we're going by Fulci rules, at which point, dug and cover, kids, the gates of hell are about to open. Yes, Danielle. Is Jason from Friday the 13th Part 6 a zombie? Oh. Oh, little girl. You just opened us all up to a world of hurt and you don't even know. So the cops arrive at the mayor's house. We're not exorcists, Mr. Mayor, just policemen. Oh, thank God. I thought we were watching the lost film Exorcist Cop, where possession is nine tenths of the law. Meanwhile, the zombies are going on a rampage. A slow, goose-stepping rampage. But undead, racist lover boy recognizes that door and decides to let himself in. Are you younger, Sarakana? You know, I just thought of this, but I'm pretty sure being able to open doors qualifies as a zombie superpower. Uh, it's getting really uncomfortable here. Yeah, Child Protective Services? Yeah, I'd like to report a case of potential child molestation. Oh, uh, when? Uh, uh, sometime between 1950 and 1980. Hello? Hello? Hey, believe me. You know, dude, showing a little girl your necklace commemorating her mother's tits may not be the most appropriate thing you've ever done. But what do I know? She seems convinced. Dad, did you really hate the Jews? Dad, this is a serious question and it needs answering. Oh man, the city cops have arrived. Finally, now it's time to accuse all the locals. I know you don't like the police to stick their nose into your own business, but we'll have to ask you all a few questions. Now I may not be some big city detective, but I'm pretty sure that someone else you should be talking to would be the fucking witness. Not that it would matter, they just get killed by the zombies in the next scene anyway. This is all your fault. No, no, seriously, that's that that's Jean Rolin, the director. This really is all his fault. Okay, boys, it's not much farther through Atlanta zombie walk. Remember that is where they're shooting the Walking Dead. Must, must eat, eat Daryl. 
I mean, Carl. Okay, boys, you go on ahead. I will walk to this door because my premarital fucking sense is tinkling. Seriously, what, can he just detect fucking now? What is he now, a zombie slasher killer? <gasps> Don't start! Aw, oh, man. Well, no matter how you slice it, this is the corniest shot of the movie. Wait, why are you wearing bikini bottoms while you're taking a bath? Bitch, what did you even trip over? Well, looks like this guy is going to break new ground by stalking a transvestite. Oh, whoops, my mistake. She's a natural born woman after all. Well, either that or the movie is having its period. Oh man, town folks are tired of these damn zombie attacks. It's time to do something about it. Well, that got quiet and respectful all of a sudden. No wonder this guy's the mayor. We must find a way to safeguard our town from the mad murdering zombies. We are not powerless. We must act. Let's ambush them if they come out tonight. Tonight? When have these zombies ever come out at night? Every shot of them has been in broad daylight. We'll wait for them out west. I'm sure they'll come by the west lane. Wait by the west? Motherfucker, you know they live in the lake. Why don't you go there? If you hurry, you can probably catch them floating in some guy's pool, getting ready for that new Coppola flick, Apocalypse Not Quite Yet. As the zombies start marching on the town, the mayor and the other townsfolk take positions to ambush them. And that is a clear blue sky, this is a day for night shot, movie you're not fooling anybody! And I have no idea where any of these people are in relation to each other. But one thing I'm absolutely positive about is that that man has elephants on his necktie. Sometimes, we just need a little certainty in life. Holy shit, they're here! Quick, aim for the everything! That's where zombies are weakest! God damn it, French guys, why are you giving up already? The Nazi Oh, oh well, that's right, they're they're still Nazis and you're you're yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Alright, let's see what Zombie Dad is up to. Okay, this is Berlin Wall in France. It's not as good as one in Berlin, which I wouldn't know because I died before they put it up. Okay, looks like the rest of the zombie squad is here trying to stop him for Oh, some reason. And movie. Could you not grope that little girl? Yeah, Child Protective Services? Yeah, yeah, it's Count Dracula again. Yeah, look, I got a zombie dad molesting his little girl. Hello? Hello? I'm a good citizen. Dude, we've established guns don't work. What's the knife for? What is this? What are they trying to do? Kill each other or fuck? Yeah, run, little girl. Fucking stranger danger. The mayor then comes to Granny's house because, you know, those are the next scenes we shot. And Granny tells the mayor that Helena was seen walking with the zombies. Helena, my poor darling, these horrible creatures could have killed you like they did many others. Not him, Grandma. Ah, shit, here we go. Kid, the guy came into your room uninvited, took his shirt off, and grabbed you in the prepubescence. Got a bit of that Stockholm Syndrome there, you think? Maybe just a little... The mayor, not encouraged by the town's lack of success at stopping the zombies and being French, descends into existential angst. Nothing ever can make them return to dust. Mm. Nothing but apocalypse. In other words, when there's no more room in France, zombie Nazis shall walk the earth. Giving up a little soon, don't you think, dude? I mean, you haven't even tried fire yet. Napalm. Wait, what? Napalm. It hurt me. But before we can put Operation Vietnam the shit out of everything into action, we have to consult the little girl so that she can know that it's okay we're killing her zombie dad. Do you know who the man with the medallion is? Yes. He's my father, and that's why I don't want you to hurt him. And the others are bad ghosts. Look, we already went over this. This ain't Fulci rules. They're zombies, okay? Not ghosts. Anything you want to add to the confusion of this issue? We'll do it tomorrow. It's the full moon. Bring me a whole lot of fresh blood. Wow, movie, you didn't even blink. First, you can't decide between zombies and ghosts, and now you're just gonna add vampire and werewolf rules to the mix? You can do it 
Well played. Well played. Okay, we're nearly at the end of this horrific, time-bending, zombie romance clusterfuck. So let's do this! Okay, the zombies come out of the lake. Reporter lady insists on staying and gets eaten. The little girl gets blood from, I don't know, fucking somewhere. The zombies come drink the blood. They light them on fire. The little girl cries, the fucking end. This is the definition of a bad movie. While director Jean Roulin does have an eye for beauty, as well as the beauties, the terrible monster makeup and his incompetence when it comes to actors approaches Ed Wood levels. And I've seen some of Roland's other films, so yeah, that terrible acting, that's him all over. Combine that with a rushed shooting schedule and the fact the film had three editors and Zombie Lake is a strange, stitched together mess of scenes and plot points. But the strangest thing is that the movie actually wants you to care about the Nazi romance and family plot. Now that kind of thing has been successfully done, but come on! I mean, is Jean Roland some kind of Nazi sympathizer? Cut! What? Cut! I yell cut! That's because it's a wrap! Alright, that was perfect! It's a wrap, people! The episode's over! What about my closing analysis? Ah, don't worry about it, Count Baby! You can do a closing analysis anytime! No, you can't! You have to do it at the end of the episode! What, are you telling me how to do this show? What, are you some kind of Borgio Easy? Counts are not part of the bourgeoisie! <laughs> I'll be the judge of that! Now get off my set! I... Okay. Whatever. Oh, bullshit anyway. <laughs> well, that was a close one. <laughs> Think he suspects?